turning that air conditioner off, guys. Um, I, uh, I have a few violins. Uh, I have a, uh, two, three quarter size. And then the one that I was working on, that was my, I said it was my grandpa, my great grandpa. He, this was the last violin. My mom told me that this was the last violin he made before he passed away. He made this in 73 and I believe he died in 74. So he died the year after he made this violin. And it would make sense because uh, my uncle Danny showed me a picture of some of the other violins that he made. And they were a little bit, uh, they were quite a bit better. This one looks like it was, he was having a rough time building it. So, um, I don't know what this is. This is rosin, guys. I'm putting rosin in the bow. Uh, I stole parts off of this three-quarter size violin, which my dad got at a flea market. I don't know for, I don't know for how much, but look at that pretty flame. I believe that it's a lark. It's a Chinese brand. Anyways, <laughs> tuning pegs on it are freaking killer. Look at that the tuning. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see that. They're like mahogany or something, man. It was real pretty. Um, it is. This is Chinese, and then I have another Chinese one right here, which I stole parts off of too. I stole the strings. Uh, I broke a string on my my violin, so I took off the strings that were on that and then salvaged the one off of the other Chinese violin, so I could put so I could put strings on this. Uh, it is done. I did get the get the the body back together and. Just Put a couple coats of stain on it to try to protect the wood, uh, seal the wood back up, and it is glued back together. And like I said, all this is homemade, hand carved. The chin rest is, the uh, tail piece is. This I stole off the the bridge. I stole off and I cut it for this violin from the Chinese one, one of the Chinese ones. And the peg heads are all, but as you can see, there's like some. You see where the paint came off the fingerboard? I'm going to have to touch that up. And I do plan on figuring, buying some kind of tool or something and getting the, you know, cutting it out so I can put purfling in there. Uh, you're supposed to do that when you make the top. And then you're supposed to varnish over the, the whole violin. Um, this is a pain in the ass, guys, to tune without fine tuners. Like, literally the... The strings are just in there, and I have to you know, kind of just do the bridge. Anyways, let's give her a listen, guys. Don't make fun of me. I'm not good at this. slightly off I'm not gonna mess with it um, I do think this needs some fine tuners so on Tuesday I'm probably gonna go get some new strings because these are all mismatched and shit and put fine tuners on the back of this bridge way easier to tune it um, let's see
ugly sounding guys <laughs> uh, I've been playing on the three-quarter size and this is a 4-4 so your fingers kind of got stretch out just a tiny bit more than you do on the three-quarter size tune um anyways that's without a sound post in so it sounds okay so it sounds okay with, with the sound post out but uh i think i'm going to work on it a little bit more guys just i was just to give you an idea of what it sounds like um, I do need to put a sound post in it. Uh, literally right now, all that's exciting the top of the violin is the, the bass bar on the right side. I mean on the left side. So the bass bar goes along here on that side. And uh, the sound post usually goes behind the foot of the bridge. <clears throat> and I need to buy like a sound post setting tool so I can stick it in there. And it's a little metal thing that holds the sound post and then it's got a little thing on top. That points down, so whenever you stick the sound post in there, it points at where the sound post is at. <clears throat> and the sound post is just like a dowel rod, so I'm gonna have to uh, probably buy one of those tools. Right now, as it sets, it sounds good. Um, I'm probably gonna play this. This is probably gonna be the one that I play all the time, and I'm probably gonna retire the Chinese ones. I'm probably gonna put get a couple sets of strings and I give my daughter. Uh, the better of these two uh, Chinese ones uh, and just by my grandpa's like this one's really pretty this is a lark uh, this is made in China it smells weird uh, it's got flame in the back I mean they do have to it's crazy even the Chinese ones guys they do have to carve out of wood with the have to car hand carve uh, this is mine, the one that I've been playing, and it's got a piece of spruce for the back and a spruce top. So it's spruce back, spruce top. Uh, the sides, I don't know what the sides are. The sides kind of look like spruce too. These are mahogany. These are mahogany sides. And the neck looks like it's fur or poplar or something anyways like this is the better of the two of the Chinese ones so uh, I'm probably gonna put uh, the bridge and stuff sitting over there in the the back and like the fine tuner tuners that they sell at uh, the music store this one's a fine tuning bridge so it's like it's like a Floyd Rose almost the tuners are fine tuners are built in so when you screw these in these little Things tug. You see how it moves? You see that? Anyways, it, these fine tuners are built into the bridge. I guess I should put them back on the violin. Uh, the chin rest is done a little bit better on this Chinese one. Uh, anyways, guys, I, I'm surrounded by violins now. Uh, just wanted to give you an idea of what it sounds like it is by far set up uh far from set up correctly uh but i wanted to play with it i could actually probably <laughs> it's out of tune, but you get the idea. Um, there's an idea of what it sounds like. Uh, I don't know how good that sounds with that mic picking it up, but it's pretty loud. Um, I think a lot. It would be a lot louder, slightly louder and stuff with the sound post in. So we're gonna look at getting a sound post for it in the purfling. 
because I do I do want to decorate it. It's kind of the perf where the perf thing was. It's like somebody marked it out and then decided not to put the perf in there. Um. Anyways, guys, that's a violin or fiddle, however you want to call it, built by my great great grandpa. Uh, George H. Bogren in 1973. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed the video and stuff. Uh, I hope it sounded okay on there. Uh, this is going to stay on my desk, and I'm going to mess around with it. Uh, I have two other bows that I'm probably going to go get uh, rehaired. This one right here, as you can see, has a lot of wear and tear on it. I, I actually haven't been playing the violins here lately. I've been messing around with the cello back there uh so this is probably going to stay on my desk so i can mess around with it and i'm probably going to retire the two chinese ones i got all their cases back there i got a big old mess on the floor here <laughs> anyways guys i hope you all enjoyed the video i hope that sounded okay and as always guys much love and i'll see you guys in the next video see y'all later